if you're madly in love uh, with a boy or a girl, you know, you're, you're probably unlikely to spend a lot of time engaging yourself, you know, unless they're engaged and you might want to do it in order to have a better time with them, right? Uh, or a better chance. Um, essentially, a democracy only works if citizens are engaged. Obviously, voting is important. Uh, but voting, what I always say is voting is really just the commas and the periods and the exclamation marks of citizenship. It's the sentences that matter, and the sentences are engagement. In the summer of 1990, a reunion took place between Canada's Ukrainian Shumka dancers and the country that sent their ancestors out into the world a hundred years ago. An intense, emotional experience for dancers and audiences alike. Such a tour had never happened before and may never happen again. It was a summer of historic change for the Soviet Union and for the 64 talented Canadians. The Canadian character, what we understand it to mean to be Canadian, was forged on, in a crucible of these fields. Uh, these fields, not just in Alberta, but the ones we're replicating here in the western front of the great war and i think uh i don't know who it was some wise fellow once said it how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you come from and i think uh i think it's very hard to get a grip on canada as it's currently constituted without some reference or context of the first war where we actually came of age I think. Clear tuning has been very important in a lot of political movements, uh, revolutions, because the average person couldn't read. So what better way to get ideals out was with symbolism. A lot of cartoonists use nationalism in their cartoons for uh, a couple of reasons. One is personal. I'm still very proud of being a Canadian. Whenever I travel, I always have a Canadian flag on me. Whenever you use a maple leaf, it's very identifiable as Canada. There's no other country that has that as a symbol. On a, an evening show and the setting sun and the rich red as the sun hits the bottom of the airplanes, I feel the, the Canadian colors coming through. And that invokes that sense of passion and nationalism for me. I, I see many other aspects of it that the way we fly our show is very much an aerial ballet. And, and we put that again, a contrast against some other demonstration teams of the world that perhaps try to provide more of a power show and, and, and show of force. We, we try to put on an aerial ballet and try to show grace and precision. And I, I think that also represents a little bit of the Canadian take on, on the world as well. We like to um, be more subtle, I suppose, and, and at least that's what I like to think that we are. <laughs> And we ask the prayers with our drums in this level where we're catching the prayers inside the drum. The second one, we raise our drum so that we can ask the Chesiam to take the prayers for us. And then the third one is where we are on a humble posture and thanking the dear Lord for hearing the prayers that we ask for. If you like, I can sing one of the verses for you. What I carry is my mother's second cousin, Chief Dan George. I carry his uh, sacred songs to sing for the hospitals and beautiful places like these pilgrimages that I go to. I'd like to get rid of the idea of nation, of nationalism. I find the idea of nationalism very dangerous. Uh, I think there's a lot of wars caused by it, and there's a lot of racism and a lot of um, sort of us and them that ends up being set up by nationalism. So for me, I think of there's so many ways that I identify myself as an athlete, um, as a woman, as a lesbian, um, as an uh, academic. There's all these different categories I have, and, and Canadian, I suppose, is one of those. But I don't, I certainly don't put that on a pedestal as something more, for sure. He was in France and then he arrived here in North America and said, how come those bunch of guys are still speaking French here? And a funny French because they find we have an accent. So he wrote this wonderful song, which is uh, like a symphony. And that says, uh, 
C'est une langue belle à qui sait la défendre. Elle offre les trésors de richesse infinie, les mots qui nous manquaient pour pouvoir nous comprendre et la force qu'il nous faut pour vivre en harmonie. At least one classic statement, the father of the family must be the master in his own house. Now, some people would think, well, that's obvious. And I've actually had people say to me, why would you even ask that question? Who else would be the master of the house? I've had that by a, actually a Latin American sociologist asked me that once. And I told her that, well, actually, in some countries, that's not always true. And actually, it's changing in some countries. Um, and then other people would say, well, that's kind of a politically incorrect statement. Why would you ask such a stupid question? Who would, who would ever assume the father would be the master of the house? Haven't you seen Homer Simpson? You know. Canadians think they're the best country in the world because they don't think they're the best country in the world. I think words can be really, really dangerous. Um, I'm someone who believes in multiple stories. I believe that the more stories we have, the more different stories we have, the more powerful, the more, more different things that we can be. People identify with the snowbirds as a symbol of Canadianism. And it's very interesting to be in the United States and inevitably there are hundreds of Canadians at a United States air show and they'll come up to us afterwards, you know, I'm from Barrie, Ontario, you, know, you make me proud to be a Canadian. And we do see that and we sense that the snowbirds have become larger than just uh, a mere entertaining function. I had the chance to go in the western part of the country where they are French minority. And I was impressed to see those French community fighting for their schools, fighting for having services in French. And I realized that their fight is also our fight and that we have together to make sure that this country promotes French everywhere. You've got uh, Wayne Gretzky's hockey stick there. You've got a, a seat from the old Montreal Forum there. You've got a piece of the Wildcat Cafe, which is the oldest building in Yellowknife there. And often Canadians will say that they're really embarrassed because we don't have the pride of Americans or we don't have, what is a Canadian? And what all of that is doing is showing how uncomfortable we are with the fact that we almost alone did not go down the route of the monolithic nationalistic nation state. Bill 101 is the charter of the French language. So when you give to a piece of legislation the title of charter, it means that you give much importance to that legislation.